Okay, okay. I'm not as fast as Ricardo, certainly not as fast as Ramon, but I'm thorough. They're laughing, aren't they? Installing hardwood is no simple task. It's an art and it takes care and craftsmanship. If you have a wood subfloor, you could do a nail down installation, but that subfloor must be flat within an eighth of an inch over six feet and three sixteenths over a 10 foot span. If your subfloor is particle board, you cannot nail down. To get it nailed down ready, you need to remove the particle board or overlay it with at least three eighths inch plywood. For nail down installation, you're gonna need some tools like a tape measure, a chalk line, a miter saw, a table saw, air compressor, compressor hoses, of course the floor nailer, and that's just the start. Plus, don't forget you need all the protective gear, right? For the eyes, for the nose and mouth, for the hands, for the knees, it's a lot. For nail down flooring on a wooden subfloor, it's recommended to use a vapor barrier. An excellent option for this is LL Flooring's Bellawood Platinum Underlayment. This underlayment will enhance the solid wood installation with superior sound, thermal, and moisture mitigating properties. And as a bonus, it's eco-friendly. Now, before you even touch a tool, you gotta start with a proper layout of the space. When we're talking about layout, there's a few things to consider. Which way do you want the boards to run in the space? Now, do you have a fireplace? Do you have doorways? Do you have elevation changes or transitions? Hallways. Typically, what you wanna do is start at the longest, straightest wall. Once you've got your starting point or your starting wall, use a chalk line to snap a straight wall just off of that because you can never rely on the straightness of a framed wall. This chalk line is your guide to place your starting row. From there, you need to rack out your flooring. Racking is the action of taking out a mix of planks from multiple boxes to ensure you'll have a beautiful array of different looks and colors across your hardwood. This process allows you to lay out your floor and preview how your floor will look before a single piece is installed. While racking out your floor, it's good practice to carefully inspect each plank. As part of the racking process, you might have to remove some unacceptable planks. It's okay. The last board in each row must be cut to fit, while still maintaining the three quarter inch expansion gap at the walls. I need to emphasize the expansion gap around the perimeter is critical. Hardwood floor is an organic material. It does grow and it does shrink. Now it's nail down time. And we're using a power nail floor nailer. Typically for a nail down installation, you're either gonna use staples or cleats. For our installation, we're gonna use cleats. Now check your manufacturer's instructions on which fastener you should use. But once you start, don't switch fasteners. Now make sure your floor nailer is properly set up and that you're familiar with it. Because if the cleat is raised, it'll cause a gap. And if it's set too deep, it'll split the tongue. You want it right in the pocket. When nailing down your boards, the cleats should be put in one to three inches from each board end. If the plank is three inches wide or less, you should space out your cleats eight to 10 inches. If the plank is wider than three inches, the spacing should be six to eight inches apart. As you're pulling planks from your rack, you're putting them in a position, tapping them in with the mallet so that the tongue and groove engage, and then finally securing them with the floor nailer. As you're nailing down your brand new floor, remember to stagger your joints at least six inches one way or the other, and eventually you're gonna get to the opposite wall. Once you get to a place in your space where the nailer won't fit between the plank and the opposite wall, then you use the power nail palm nailer. If you don't have a palm nailer, you can use a standard pneumatic nailer with finished nails. And as you come to the last row, you will need to face nail or glue down the last row. If you decide to face nail, be sure to do it close to the wall so the holes are covered by the trim or fill the holes with suitable putty. I'm gonna say it, I'm, yep, I'm gonna say it. Nailed it.